All right, let's do uh, like a one year review on me running the T66 R series Bobcat. Um, I did a review video on this thing when I first got it and put, you know, I think I had 40, 60 hours or something like that on it when I did my first video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in there, put it up here, whatever, however the YouTubers do it. And go watch that first before you watch this video. Um, Cause this one's really just gonna be about mostly like all my complaints that I have. It's not gonna really harp too much on all the positives because overall it's a good machine and uh, i'd probably buy it again so but let's jump right into it i went ahead and i sat down and just stared at this thing out the window threw down a uh, pros and cons list let's just pro con uh, pro list is real small but it kind of hi highlights the entire machine i don't really like jump on individual things but uh first thing lift capacity for weight so this is like a nine thousand pound machine 74 horse it handles all it can handle. It will that thing will lift way more than what it weighs. Um, not saying it'll lift nine thousand pounds. What I'm saying is, as far as balancing, you can pick up the arms just don't stop going up before the SN comes up. If you know what I mean. So if you're an operator, you know what I mean. Um, if it, if you can get it off the ground and get it moved, it'll do it. In uh, other words, um, it's picked up some stuff and balanced it out that was a lot heavier than I thought it would be able to handle, and it handled it just well. Um, I was pretty surprised on it on some things. And then there's other things that I go to pick up. I'm like, really, you can't get that? So that's one of those things. But again, it's a 74 horsepower machine. You know, it's not the new T86. So you're just gonna have to take that in consideration when you buy one of these. Um, you know, I got this so I can get into tight spaces and backyards and stuff and still have some power to, you know, do grading, stuff like that, or move bowlers, whatever. So, and uh, it works good for me. So not really gonna complain about that. I think they did a very good uh, power weight ratio. Um, as far as built machine, like well built, there's no like major rattles or anything like that, other than maybe like that that boom thing that you put on the hydraulics when you got the arms in here so they don't crush you. Um, you'll hear that every now and then, but for the most part, this thing there's no rattles or anything, and it could be because all the mud's stuck in there, right? Um, I know you're probably wondering why is it so muddy, guys. It's winter out right now. I use the machine. I clean it as much as I can. It's not too crazy cold right now, so I didn't freeze in there, so I didn't really clean out too much. Um, but we're gonna get on on that that's a that's a con of mine so we're gonna get on that here in a second but that's why it's muddy i use the damn thing so if you're sitting in there uh griping oh my god his machine is so dirty well listen here karen i use it it makes me money okay if i wanted it to be clean all the time i'd hire somebody to clean it but i use it to you know i use it to get money so i don't have to so anyways uh overall visibility so they got the cabs on these new ones way up front and i was like kind of mad about it just for the fact that you got all that in the back there and then you're bumping into stuff but after operating this thing quite a bit you come to realize that hey they did that so that you could see the bucket and you can really do some grading with this thing because you can see everything um the arms are like really far down below the glass so visibility wise you can see pretty much anything you want from this point forward now when it comes back you know i can see all this stuff here you can't see a damn thing back here though they did equip it with a pretty nice camera that you can click a button and it'll stay on most of the time. And I do have the larger screen on this one. So that's kind of something you're going to want because the back end on these things, she big. So keep that in mind. Um, tie down spots is one thing I kind of hint on in my list. So it's got one on each side on the back there. And then it's got these cool holes in the arms here that I was kind of like, that's kind of stupid. But to be honest with you, I kind of like it. Um, you can tie this thing down, which I do it on the exact same trailer every time when I haul it. So there's not really a whole lot of wear on those things, but I didn't think I was going to like them. And I actually do. Uh, it makes it quick and easy. You know, I got to claw up on the trailer half the time. I could reach up there, just do it. Same thing with the back. They don't really, you know, this thing's muddy as hell, but look how clean those are. You know, on the old ones, they had the thing up underneath there and it was always packed full of crap. You had to have a screwdriver on here or something or a knife and clean that thing out. I mean, even that one, there's got mud on it, but look, the hole's still accessible. So I think they did a good job on that. Um, and then let's just say overall, the whole machine, this is my last one on the list. Overall, this machine operates pretty smoothly. Um, took me a minute to get used to the controls because it's electrical for hydraulic like everything is these days. But once you kind of figure out how much pressure it takes to do this or that, you become pretty efficient with it. Um, I've had uncle, my uncle and this and that guys, other guys run it that run, you know, the other series Bobcats or ran Bobcats for years. And immediately they're like, man, I don't like this thing. But you know what? I was the same way when I first got it, but now they got a couple hundred hours on it. I'm pretty good with it. Um, so I don't mean to toot my own horn or anything, but uh, I can get her done. So let's go ahead in the cons list. I got an inside and outside, inside being cab. Um, since we're back here, first con, this radiator setup. Okay, 
Now, here's my thing. They make a reverse fan for this thing that blows all this crap out of here. First red flag. If they knew that this thing was going to pack full of stuff and they had to put a fan on it, they should have put the fan on every one of them. You know what I mean? So, obviously, that's what I'm going to gripe about. Let me open the door here. This fan is just constant. Or this, this fan. This radiator is just constantly filling with a little bit of stuff like that. And it is just, there's not much slope on here. These ribs are really deep. I don't know why they're so deep. Why is, why can't this be smooth where stuff hits there and slides off? I, I don't understand that. I'm, I'm sure it's for strength or something like that. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I'm just an idiot. But there's too much stuff here, people. And what is, look at this. It's like gutter, you know, they're like gutters. Look at this stick. Watch this. It goes all the way down here like this, right? And then they got this nice, you know, three quarter, one inch lip. And this stuff just never gets out of there. You know, it can't go anywhere but back into the engine if it does fall out. So, I think you guys need to figure something out there. That ain't working. And like I said, you put a reverse fan option on the nicer models. We already paid 80 grand for this thing. Why don't you put it on mine? So, that's a gripe. Other gripe. Bobcat. Why is it eating this? Where is it going? I've been in contact with them. About every three fill-ups of fuel, I got to add coolant to that thing. It ain't leaking it, it's eating it. It's going somewhere in the uh, engine there. So, not supposed to do that. So, they need to figure that out. So, we're going to get back on them about that. Hopefully, they see this video and be like, oh, we're so sorry. Here, let me fix that. Um, other than that, I've done some maintenance on this thing because it is my machine. I am the mechanic and the operator. Dude, it's so easy. Um, it's way easier than the other series where they had the engine here. I shouldn't say that because the engines this way had all the filters on the back. It's about the same. We'll just say it's about the same. You know, you get, all your filters are pretty accessible. This door comes way over 90 degrees. You can reach all that stuff back there. So as far as jump starting and everything, I've actually never had to do it. So I can't tell you if you got to jump start it, if that's worth the crap or not. But that's also a good thing. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it and I use it quite a bit. So overall back here, they did a good job. I'm not going to complain about it. Um, I'm still going to gripe about the door like I did in my last video, though. It's chintzy. I've hit a few things. Like, you'd be operating, you bump into something, and you can feel it. You know, it's solid. You're like, man, I don't even want to go back there because I'm just I'm just assuming this thing's just smashed. You know, I've, I've chipped the paint and stuff, but somehow I've missed that every time. And whatever reason, this big bar here, it sticks out farther than it looks, and it usually catches whatever you're going to run into way before the door. So that's kind of nice. But keep in mind, that door is, in my opinion, still flimsy. So let's go over some other cons on the outside. Um, needs two speed. All right, so this is a real big one. So this machine is pretty much op spec'd out, minus it doesn't have the two speed, and it doesn't have hand controls. And what's the other one? And it doesn't have those lights up top. I don't know. There's a couple options it doesn't have. The two-speed. So this thing, not having two-speed, the way they've got it set up, the gear ratio they got going on in here, it works okay on, like, if I just run around out there on the flat ground, it works great. But the minute I go up that hill, if I have a load or not, it doesn't matter. If I got a load on this thing, I literally, I'll go 10 feet and boo, and then I got to let it ring, and then I'll go another 10 feet, boo, or I just got to go a real slow speed. So this thing needs two speed on it. So you, you know, just, just like the fan issue, just put the damn thing on there. I know it makes it cheaper if you don't get it, but just put it on there as an option because guys like me come out here and complain about it because they're like, ain't got no damn power. And they don't think about the fact that it needs two speed. Just put it on there and you'll have a quality product. You don't have to worry about a crap. So that's something. Um, it really needs it because the 74 horsepower moving all that weight. When you, like I said, you're going up a hill, it just, it kills it, man. Especially if you're going into a pile of dirt. You know it can move the dirt, but you can only do it real slow instead of doing it fast or your normal speed because you know it's just going to bog down right away. So it needs that gear change in there. Um, grease cert. So there's four grease certs on this thing that suck. All of them are pretty accessible. No problems. Like when you're greasing, you can go through this thing pretty quick. You're like, oh, they're all easy to go. Except for this one. So this one here, I got the Milwaukee. You stick it in the hole, pull the trigger, that kind of thing. The problem is when you stick it through the hole here, on there because you can't come from this angle you stick it through the hole and you start neat, 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 neat. well when you're done you go to take it off uh-oh you can't pull it off it's kind of weird motion you can't pull it off of there because you know i'll grease it if anybody knows what they're doing you just kind of kick it to the side pops right off go to the next one nope can't do that with that one because once you get in the hole this hole keeps it there so i don't know maybe cut that out to use you can go up with it i've contemplated cutting that trust me like i've gotten some really pissing me i've hoped customers haven't seen me yanking on that thing because i actually broke one of my milwaukee deals pulling on that getting mad so that's an issue while we're standing here let's do it i don't want to do it but let's do it look at all the mud obviously this is an issue 
Bobcat, you need more angle on this or you need more less crap or less metal. I don't know what the answer is, but this stuff's not, I mean, it was pretty soupy when it got on there. It just doesn't clean. This thing does not self-clean. You know, I've run the Takahuchis quite a bit, and I haven't seen issues as, as much as this, guys. Um, there's, like, a huge flat spot right here. Like, there's no angle to it at all. Well, obviously, that's just going to pack in there. And it kicked the track off a couple weeks ago because of it. And I was mad. Boy, I was mad. Yes, I know. You got to clean the damn thing. I do, guys. I promise. This thing's cleaner more than it's dirty. But I use it. There's not enough room back there. And the, one of the terrible gripes that I have with it being such a small gap there, when you're operating this thing, a rock will get in there, and it is just nails on a chalkboard all the way down this thing. And you just, sometimes I just, I full forward just get just to get it over, like a Band-Aid, just rip it off, just to get it over with. You can just hear it. But that's a gripe. You know, I do have the wide tracks. You know, the dealer did put the wide tracks on here for me, which I really enjoy. It does really well floating over stuff, this and that. But there's an issue there. It, there just it needs to be a little more gap, so... A little bit better design there, I think. Um, the other issue, and this is really common I've seen on online. So they make a seal kit that goes between here and there. And I've heard it's like $1,200. Don't quote me on it, but I've heard it's $1,200. Dude, why is this flange the way it is? All it does is conveyor belt junk. I mean, all day long. So the first time I ever went to lift the cab up just to service this, make sure nothing was leaking, you should have seen all the crap inside this thing. It is just, I'm afraid, looking how dirty it is now, I'm afraid to even look in there. I know I got like two hours of cleaning in there. I just no idea. So that's the downside. That seal kit's a joke. You guys just need to completely read. I don't know. Bring this, like this, this main frame all the way to here, like the old ones or something. Don't start the cab up here. That was, you know, I'm sure with being able to move this and that was great. No, I'm sure there's a reason you did it, but do away with it. We've been climbing over these things for 25 30 years we know they suck working on it. that's not the pro you know go back to where you were because this deal where it just dumps mud in there that's a horrible design that's that is going to ruin so many machines out there so anyways that I'll, I'll quit griping about that i'll go on to something else uh let's go on something i really harped on on the last video that's uh let's, oh here let's just do this let's check the hydraulic fluid level on this thing uh, well yeah we can't because it's back there it's uh I, I promise you it's in like this area here or it might be right there i think it, i don't know it's in here somewhere as you can tell i can't find it so you know if i came out after i got all muddy or, or hey let's do let's, let's do this situation so i'm running this thing you know i swap implements whatever and i get in it all of a sudden the thing's real jerky i'm like what the hell was that well i mean man, i blew a hose man check the fluid level on there you hop out you're on the job so this thing's dirty you hop out and you go oh well let me just take an hour to clean this figure out where my level's at that's my point. Like, it's just junk, guys. It doesn't work. It's a terrible spot. Move it. Move it. So, I won't harp on it any more than that. Again, those covers, I hit that in the last video, too. I like that you can take them off and get to the hoses. I get it. But they're stupid. They're in a bad spot. They're going to get smashed. So, there's that. Um, oh, this one. I hate to even talk about this one. All right. So, you guys probably are like, man, this dude's rough on this thing. Like, it's muddy, and, the, you know, the stickers are all beat to hell. No, guys, no. I have done more damage to those stickers cleaning it than I have uh, operating it. And that is a true fact. Anybody that has one of these, I guarantee is going to agree with me. Bobcat, your sticker guy. Fire him. Done. Donezo. So, right here, here's a Bobcat sticker, right? This is from the dealership I got it at. So, obviously, they put it on there, not you. Watch this. Now, I'm, I'm not really kicking it hard, but I'm kicking it. Look, I'm cleaning it, right? All right. I'm going to kick, like, right in this area. Watch. Look. Look, it, it actually knocked off some of the sticker. Ready? Look at that. Look. That's what I'm talking about. Look how junk these are. Look. Didn't even leave a boot mark. But look what it did to that one. Fire that guy. Fire that guy. You know what I mean? So there's nothing worse. And every time I power wash this thing, I'm just like, here we go. And there will be orange crap all over my driveway. It's depressing. You spend all this money and you can't even get a quality sticker on the damn thing. First time I washed it, I blew off about four of them. So and actually, I got a video when I tended this thing. If you watch it, you watch me. And when I tended this thing, mind you, when I tended this thing, I think it had less than 40 hours on it. I blew stickers off of it somewhere right here. I think they were right here. 
honestly. A blue sticker's off of it in that video. So anyways, click on that. So I'm out of breath after kicking that. Just had the COVID. Anyways, uh, talked about that. Talked about that. Uh, mud and belly, grease search, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's the cons on the outside. Let's jump in the cab. And uh, let me grab my con thing here. Con cab. Oh, I forgot the pro one. Anyways. No, it's on the ground. So hopping in the cab, first gripe, still hate the door. Before I get in there, the reason I hate the door. See the seal is off of there? I'm like, oh no, man, your seal's messed up. It's constantly messed up. Why is it messed up? Because the implement, half the implements I have are so big because I do a certain type of business. Half the implements I have, they stick up just a little bit. So that puts that cylinder up a little bit and I can only open the door about right here. And guess what hits it? That cylinder and that seal. I mean, they smash more than me and the old lady. They just constantly are touching each other. So that's a gripe. Your door design still sucks, in case you guys are wondering. Um, the seat, it's got the air ride seat, so I did get the little nicer option there. And it's constantly out of air. So no matter how many times you use this thing a day, with this and that, I don't know if my butt's hitting it. It ain't my giant ball sack or anything, but something's letting all the air out. And it's constantly needing to be pumped back up. And you'll know because you'll be driving it and you'll be like, man, this thing's riding rough. You look down and got no air in it. So not going to complain about it too much because there's guys out there that don't have that. But if you do have that, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So let's go ahead and get in this thing. Go over some stuff. I do have the hand controls. A lot of guys are hand controls. I did call it the hand controls last time. And everybody got mad at me. That's not hand controls. That's foot controls. Yeah, you're right, Karen. Calm down. So I got the foot controls. I don't know. It was cheaper. A lot of guys. You know what the biggest reason I got it? Honestly, I got the foot controls because nobody, everybody wants to borrow your equipment when you have one. And then they find out it's foot controls and they no longer want to borrow it. So that's why I got it. And it was option. They were, they were hard to get back in the day when I got this thing. And they were like, well, only one we got in here is foot controls. I was like, hey, bring it on. I came up on those things. So it doesn't bother me. It might bother some of you uh, operators, but it doesn't bother me. So I can operate either one. But anyways. Getting into the cab, now that I'm done yelling about it. Listen to this. You hear that? Well, if you like operating bobcats, this is all you're gonna hear as you're going down the road. Constantly, I don't care what kind of terrain, that's all you hear. If you guys know how to tighten that, please drop a comment. I don't see any adjustments anywhere on there, and it's just this part. It has nothing to do with anything else. I've already looked at it. This needs to bite harder down on here. I thought about actually welding a spot on there to make it a tighter fit. And it's closed all the way, trust me. I mean, I'm... And it's not because of that seal. So before you say that, it's not. It's just... It doesn't bite down. I don't know if the seal is just not compressed all the way. I don't know what the deal is. That needs to come closer. So, while we're talking about the glass and stuff, let me put this stupid thing out. So, they got the windows on this thing on the back instead of the front. When I first got it, I liked it because it kind of like threw all the air. I no longer like it. And I'll tell you, there's two reasons why. One reason, so I hurt my back a while back. And for me to turn around, I thought, you know, I hurt my back. I can still operate the machine, you know. Well, I have to open this. It's all the way back here. You got to like reach across your back where it hurts and then slide it forward. You know what I mean? That kind of deal. The other thing I don't like about it, it feel like all the dust and dirt goes right into your ear hole. Uh, because it's like right next it's kind of nice because it lets the cool air in here but these cabs are so small with the air conditioning and the heat it'll burn you out of these things or cool you out of them anyway so you don't really need uh, back where we were somebody called me right when i was complaining so anyways i don't like the window on the back and the other reason that i didn't mention so you see the tooth where it like locks in right there see how it's got all these like spots that it's supposed to lock in well this thing all the way back that's it that's all as far as it goes it doesn't lock in there well, how worthless is that? So as you're moving, the machine's, you know, doing that kind of thing. It does that. And then before you know it, there it is. And the thing that I don't like about it the most is every time it rains, you know, I get out of the machine, forget to look for it. Every time it rains, water seeps down and it gets all down in here. So I don't like that. Why doesn't it latch? It doesn't do it on either side. Look, like, what's the point? What's the point of the latches at all? You know what I mean? So they need to, they need to figure that out. So. But other than that, I mean, field of view, everything good. You know, like I said, you can see everything. Um, I do have the tinted windows you can't see out of everybody. You know, there's 35%. You can't see nothing. Look at that. It is so dark out there. Look, when I open the window up, look at the difference on how dark that is on 35% and a regular no percentage. 
I'm being sarcastic. It's not that dark, guys. Calm, calm down, old man. So, but that's it, guys. That's my thought. Overall, would I buy it again? Yeah, I'd buy it again. Um, there's some things I don't like about it, but you know what? There's some things I don't like about all of them. Oh, dude. So I told you earlier, there's four spots. Grease certs that I hate, that was the one of them. Here's the other two. I know I told you four and I only showed you two. Here's the other two. There's one on each side here. One here and one on the other side. So that's just a washer with a grease cert and a snap ring. I've knocked the snap ring out somehow. I have no idea how, don't ask. But then the washer falls off. You lose all that stuff. And it's a, it's a pretty, it's not just a washer. It's a pretty involved looking thing. But anyways, you lose that. And then there's no way for grease to stay in there. And then it just completely cakes full of mud. So that was an issue I did run into. So keep an eye on that stuff when you guys are cleaning these things and whatever, getting in and out of them, check for those things. Because I did lose mine. It was that one. So every time I get in this thing on this side, first thing I look at. So, but like I said, guys, that's it. Um, pretty happy with it. I would definitely buy it again. I hope there's nothing here that I didn't forget to mention. I don't know. I'm so anxious to drink some beer that I forgot. So anyways, guys, don't forget to uh, hit the like button on the, the video. Subscribe to the channel for more. I'm pretty rough on this thing, and I'm also uh, pretty thorough on working on it. So any other issues I come across, I will definitely video them for you guys. So if you're interested in the our series bobcat uh you know shoot me a comment down below ask a question if you got one or ask any of these other experts in the comment area they like to argue down there i like to read that stuff so make sure you comment but till next time guys we'll see you later and uh peace out